Hi everyone, my name is Anton Felcher. I'm an engineer and I've been constructing fish farms for over 10 years. Today I'm standing in front of this wonderful heating boiler, which means we're going to talk about a fish farm heating. Make sure you watch this video to the end, because I will not just talk about how you can heat your fish farm, but we will consider in details the cost of heating and also debunk the myth that heating a farm is almost the major cost that operating such a farm incurs. And we start with the fact that there is a widespread belief that heating at a rust fish farm, given the fact that the water in the tanks needs to be heated, incurs crazy costs. And once you engage in fish farming business, you get some astronomic prime cost of fish due to the expenses for heating. So that my words don't seem to you unfounded and proofless, today we will break down all the figures and costs, so that you see for yourself whether the devil is really as terrible as they painted, or in fact it's just a far-fetched myth created out of ignorance. So, let's start with the fuel sources. In order to make it as interesting as possible, I will not just give you an overview of these sources, but I will rank them from the most conventionally bad to the most interesting. The ranking I have compiled is quite simple. There is a maximum scale of 10 points. Two factors are considered. The first is cost, and the second is convenience in general, ease of connection and ease of use. These points are added up to make a final score, which is how I have graded all of the options. What does electricity essentially mean in terms of heating? You install electric heaters, an electric boiler, but these units heat your building using electricity. What is the nuance here? First of all, the price. The fact that electricity average cost in my country, for example, is at least 7 cents per kilowatt. What implies this cost per kilowatt? Electricity being transformed into heat one-to-one -one costs 7 cents. This is the highest figure of all major heat sources. So electricity gets a well-deserved 2 out of 10 points due to its cost, as it's the most expensive heat in source. And the second factor we will consider is convenience. In terms of convenience, I can state that electrical power is very convenient to use, meaning that you put a boiler, you install a power supply line, you get a certain electric power, the boiler transforms the electricity into heat, and thus you heat the building. It seems cool, but I wouldn't give the maximum rating in terms of convenience either, because, first of all, you will need a substantial capacity of the power line, but it's not always available. And secondly, of course, the electricity can be cut off, and not only will your farm equipment stop, you'll also have no heating. In principle, it's not necessarily lethal for your fish if you take the precaution measures, so I give electricity 8 points in terms of convenience. Let's summarize. 8 plus 2 gives you a score of 10, which is the lowest score of all heating sources. The second heating source is diesel fuel. Of course, everyone is well aware of this heating source. You can put a diesel boiler, burn diesel and get heat. What is it also at the bottom of my rating? Generally, it is the same rating of 10 points as electricity. Because in principle, these sources are valuable in terms of cost and convenience ratio. I will explain why. If we take the prime cost of 1 liter of diesel fuel in Russia, it's about 50 cents and recalculating it through the heat of combustion. The cost of 1 kilowatt of heat turns out to be about 4 cents, which is already two times cheaper than electricity. Therefore, diesel receives deserved 5 points in regards to the cost. And that is not bad at all. And what is about convenience? The diesel fuel needs to be purchased and replenished on the constant basis. The diesel boiler implies constant emissions into the atmosphere. And also it's not very convenient in operation. You may need special permission if you want to provide for a big warehouse with diesel fuel. Therefore, for not very high convenience in operation, we give this source 5 points. So 5 plus 5 makes 10, which is basically the same as for electricity. Thus, we have it the second in the anti-top. But second place, and not first, is just due to being cheaper than electricity overall in operation. And within the top three sources from the bottom is also the liquefied gas. I will explain why. The first is due to its cost. In my country, now a liter of liquefied gas costs about 30 cents. 
If we recalculate the cost of liquefied gas, taking into account the specific heat of combustion, we get the cost of 4 cents per 1 kilowatt of heat, which is generally equivalent to that of diesel fuel. Liquefied gas is much more convenient to use than diesel because you have a large tank installed underground, you fill it once, and you have an automatic supply of liquefied gas. Then there is an evaporator, the gas is fed to the boiler, and you basically get the same gas heating that you would get using the main gas. But only this source is autonomous and using liquefied gas. Once every few months you supply the liquefied gas to your farm, a special car arrives and fills it up. So it's generally very convenient to use. More importantly, why did I give it a high rating score? Because the liquefied gas is easy to be substituted by the mains gas. If after some time, in year or two, main gas is connected to your farm, you need to simply switch the source of fuel and the same boiler will be heated, but only with a much lower cost. Therefore, liquefied gas gets 8 scores for convenience. And the final rating is 13 points, which is already higher than the rating of electricity and diesel. And the next source of fuel in my ranking is firewood. Interesting, isn't it? Basically, we live in the 21st century, and you may ask whether anyone still uses firewood at all. In fact, in my country it's still being used, especially if we are talking about the regional cities and towns, because not everywhere there is mains gas supply. Not always it's convenient to supply liquefied gas. Sometimes it's a very remote rural area, and sometimes there is a forest nearby, and this source of heating turns out to be free or rather cheap. So let's talk about the prime cost. In terms of prime cost firewood in my country, which is Russia, is at the same level as the main gas cost. The price of 1 kilowatt of heat is around 1 cent, which is very small. Thus, firewood gets 10 points. But there is another aspect. Convenience. What is firewood? You have practically no possibility to automate a wood boiler. Wood needs to be chopped, wood needs to be stored, wood needs to be carried, discharged. And because of the large amount of manual work, it's impossible to give a high score to firewood. Because in principle, it's quite such an obsolete source of heat. And this is the major trouble with firewood. And some of you have probably faced it before in childhood or whenever. So I can say that generally, firewood is a very inconvenient thing. Who knows it, who has experienced it, who's ever waved an axe to chop it? Please, press the like button. Thus, the firewood gets 4 points for convenience, as in reality it's not very convenient or automated heating source. What's in total? Firewood now occupies the 4th position from the bottom and the 5th from the top. The firewood gets 14 points. And next in my ranking is coal. I'm talking now about mineral coal, which is very popular in my country. Our ranking is the same as for firewood, but the power balance is slightly different. To be honest, I don't know any household in Russia that would run on coal, because it's a very, let's call it so, dirty fuel source, and using it incurs a lot of mess and hustle. Today we're soberly evaluating the cost-efficiency ratio, and that's why I have to include coal into the ranking. And it turned out to be a very interesting situation, which I did not expect. As far as its cost of production is concerned, I'll consider the situation in my country. Let me underline that. The average price of a ton of coal is around 100 US dollars, that is 1 cent per kilogram. And if we recalculate it through the heat of combustion, we obtain 10 cents per kilowatt, which in general is very inexpensive. So the coal gets 9 points in terms of cost, but not the maximum of 10 points, as it's more expensive than gas and firewood. And in regards to the convenience, coal is slightly better than wood. Slightly better in terms of what? As a matter of fact, there are boilers that are automated at the same level as pellet boilers. You pour coal, then you have boiler running, like a cabin robot. But I need to underline that not each and every coal will do. There is an alternative that you will have to break, crush the coal, because it's not suitable for a certain type of boiler. And in general, it's quite a dirty heat source. Coal still needs to be stored, it causes a lot of trouble, and also it's not very environmentally friendly. Thus, coal gets well deserved 5 points, so we add up 5 and 9 and get 14 points. This is the source of heating relatively equal to wood fire. Well, we're approaching the top three sources, and our top three list opens with heat pumps. It's an alternative source of heating, and in my country it has started being used widely quite recently. Actually, it has been used in my country for a long time, but it has only recently started being widely used in the recent years. These are heat pumps. What are they? I'm obliged to explain for those who don't widely use them in their countries. 
A heat pump is a heat exchanger which provides for heat exchange between the outdoor air and the indoor air. Or is it a geothermal heat pump that receives heat from the ground through the condenser, raising it and thus heating the building? Thus, the major feature of these pumps is that they use the heat of the environment, cooling the air from the environment and thus heating the building. It's a completely environmentally friendly heating source. Now let's proceed to the cost of this heating source. Making use of such a pump from 1 kilowatt of electricity, you can get an average of 3-5 kilowatt of heat. Well, that's pretty high efficiency coefficient. Let's take the average figure of 4 kilowatts. It turns out that from 7 cents, which is the costs of 1 kilowatt of electricity, you will get 4 kilowatts of heat. This means that the cost per kilowatt of heat is 20 cents at maximum, which is generally not bad, but it's two times more expensive than mains gas or firewood. Therefore, the heat pumps get a well-deserved 8 score in terms of cost criteria. And as far as convenience in operation is concerned, in general, this is a great unit that you install and forget that in order to put it in our Russian conditions, as these are mainly geothermal pumps, you need to drill a borehole, you need to install heat exchangers, and thus the procedure of the heat pumps installation is quite costly. Otherwise, it's a great source of heating. And surely the second factor, they consume electricity. Without electricity, they don't operate at all. So, this source is good enough. But we deduct a point due to the cost of installation and due to the electricity consumption. And finally, this source gets 8 points for convenience. 8 plus 8 makes 16. And they open up our top 3. And the second place from the top deservedly belongs to wood pellets. I'm standing in front of such a boiler, which is an automatic pellet boiler. It operates on wood, but not classic wood, but on processed and pressed into pellets. Let's figure out what it is. The cost of one kilogram of pellets is approximately five cents. If we recalculate it through the specific heat of combustion, we receive the prime cost of approximately 10-20 cents per one kilowatt of heat which is only slightly more expensive than the mains gas and firewood cost. Thus, in terms of cost pellets, get 9 points. Let's talk about convenience. How convenient is it to use pellets? Of course, it's not as convenient as gas. You have to do something to make some effort. Which exactly? You have to buy the pellets. You have to store them somewhere and periodically refill the hopper. In this case, as soon as you have poured these pellets into the hopper, the boiler does it all by itself. It works fully automatically. Pellets hold the temperature very well, that is, all you need is to buy and refill pellets. It seems to me that in the situation of the mains gas absence, it's a very cool option, because it's cheap and rather easy to use, and such a pellet boiler is used at this farm, where I am situated right now, and our customer is very happy with it. And by the way, we will soon release a very detailed video tour of this farm, and we will show you the pellet boiler once again. So, if you are interested, follow the videos on my channel. Pellets get 7 points for convenience, slightly less than the pumps because you basically just have to buy and refill. Therefore, 9 plus 7 equals 16, and this source holds the second place of this rating. You see that the number of points is the same as those of heat pumps, but pellets are cheaper in my country, so we let them into second place. But surely you need to consider the situation in your region. I do always underline that. And as you may have guessed, the leader of this rating is Mains Gas. Let me say straight away and reiterate that my native country is Russia, and I have to refer to its internal realities, more or less. But definitely, if you are residents of other countries, you have different tariffs. For instance, you have more expensive Mains Gas. This rating might look a little or even dramatically different for your particular country. But in Russian conditions, Mains Gas is by far the most competitively viable source of heating. I will now explain why. Firstly, due to its prime cost, the cost of one cubic meter of gas is about 8 cents. And if you recalculate it to the cost of one kilowatt of heat, that is in terms of a specific heat of combustion, you will get only 6 cents for one kilowatt of heat, the lowest tariff of any heat and source that we've discussed before. That is the first thing. So gas gets well deserved 10 points as cheapest source. And the second is convenience. I can't give it the maximum rating. And I will also explain why. If you have already made use of mains gas, it's super convenient to use if you have the central gas line. But I need to take two points off this source, because if you don't have, it's often expensive and difficult to connect. 
Many of you, no matter which country you are from, have probably experienced gasification issue difficulties and understand that it often takes seven circles of hell before you get the mains gas properly connected. Or maybe you have already got fed up with it and have found some alternative heating source. That's why gas gets 8 points, 10 plus 8 equals 18, and the mains gas is the undisputed rating leader. I will reiterate, I refer to my country. You can always make the same evaluation of yours. I have also gone through the gasification process, even at a cottage settlement that is for a country house. Provided that Maine's gas line was laid at the border of the site, it still me quite a penny to connect the gas to the house. It was not a small amount. And if the Maine's gas pipelines are located far away from your plot, those figures can be rather high, especially for industrial enterprises. My case is surely is not the most complicated one, so if any of you have gone through the gasification that has taken up a lot of time, effort and money, share your experience, because it's very valuable. I read all the comments, I'll surely respond. And now, a couple of words about the promised bonus. Below you can find the link, following which you can download the file where you can find the detailed data on the cost of each fuel source in Russia, as well as my rating. Real costs are also included into this document, that is, up-to-date calculation on the economics of heating for each type of fish and for each heating source, so it's a very interesting document. You can, by the way, change the tariffs to adapt the initial data to your country and region. These documents will automatically calculate for you and compare all possible heat sources. Download the file and press the like button. This is Anton Pelcher and my channel on how to grow fish and earn good money from it. Bye!